Welcome everyone and good afternoon. Before our worship experience begins, we'd like to make you aware of a few things. Please remember that our new Sabbath school time is 9 a.m. via Facebook and Zoom. Please continue to remain faithful in your giving. We thank you for your faithfulness. We encourage you to prepare your hearts to receive what God has in store for you today. The North Church desires to be a unified body of believers that represents the love of Jesus. We achieve this by being northbound through nurture, outreach, relationship, truth, and the Holy Spirit. May God bless you to receive a blessing and be a blessing today. Check. Time for prayer, church. We invite all to assume a posture of prayer that's appropriate for yourselves with the standing, kneeling, coming before the altar. This is our time to approach God's throne of grace. Let us pray. Dear kind and gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for sparing our lives to see this Sabbath day. We thank you, first of all, for being our God and our Father. We thank you for your awesomeness and your, your holiness, your righteousness. We thank you for being our Savior. We thank you for being our Creator, our Sustainer. Most of all, God, we thank you for being our Redeemer. Your word has said where two or three are gathered that you would be in our midst. So we thank you already for your presence that's here, but we still invite the Holy Spirit to be amongst us, to rest, rule, and abide. We ask that the Holy Spirit would break up the fallow grounds of our hearts. We pray that you would give us hearts of clay that could be molded and mended into your will, Lord. Take away the stony hearts, Lord. We pray that you would break every chain this morning that binds. God, help us to have hearts that are willing to serve you in every capacity that we can, whether it's in the church or out in the streets. We pray, that, Lord, that you would just be with us and make us examples of your grace in our homes where people see us each and every day. May it outflow once again to the communities in which we live. May it outflow to our jobs when we go to the supermarkets or get gas in our cars. Let let people look at us and, and wonder who it is that we serve, what it is about us that causes us to have this joy, this unspeakable joy that passes all understanding. God, we pray for the bereaved among us, Lord. Sister Taryn Williams is first and foremost that comes to mind. Then there's the, the Smith family, and there's just so many others, Lord. There's just so much death in this new year, and we just pray that you would comfort those hearts as only you can. Be with those that are unemployed or underemployed. Be with those who are going to school matriculating. Be with those who need just uh, to hear a special word from you. And that's why we've come here today, Lord, just asking that you would just fill us up to overflowing, dear Lord. Be with our pastor and the speaker this morning that he would uh, not only bring forth the word that is, is re a reminder or a word that we've heard before, but bring forth new and fresh bread this morning that we need that we might be encouraged that we might be motivated and challenged to live greater christian lives for you and lord when all is said and done we look forward to the day when you shall burst the clouds of glory and come home to redeem us we can't wait lord help us to do our part help us to hold up our part of the co covenant to let others know of a soon coming savior and when all is said and done, Lord, we'll be so thankful to give you all the praise, the honor, and the glory for your matchless and holy name we pray. Amen. Praise the Lord, everybody. Oh, praise the Lord, everybody. Hallelujah. You can clap your hands and give God praise. Would you do me a favor? Would you look at somebody around you and tell them, neighbor, I can't tell you everything the Lord has done for me, but all I can tell you is he's been good. 
If you know God's been good, would you clap your hands and let's give God praise. Celebrate a mighty God, He's a holy God. Hallelujah, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, let the glory of the Lord rise among us. Let the glory of the Lord rise among us. Let the praises of our King. Rise among us, oh, let it rise. Let the glory of the Lord rise among us. Let the glory of the Lord rise among us. Let the praises of our King rise among us. Oh, let it rise.
Alléluia. Now come on, let the glory of God rise. Come on, let praises rise. Come on, would you give him the fruit of your lips? Come on. I was speaking with someone today. We were having a conversation about people forcing people to praise God. And y'all know as worship leaders, we encourage you to praise the Lord. David said it like this, oh, magnify the Lord with me. Not for me, but with me. But this morning, I want you to praise God out of your relationship. I want you to praise God from a place. We've been through so much the past two or three years. How many know we've been in a pandemic since 2020? We still in a pandemic and God has kept us. For the next few moments, even with no assistance of music, we're going to stretch you just a little bit. With no assistance of any music, would you just lift up your hands and let's open up our mouths and give God what he's due. Come on, offer up your praise, everybody all over the room. Hallelujah. You don't know what to say, say hallelujah. Come on, at home, it's nobody but you and him. Yes, God, we love you this morning. Come on, don't just clap, but offer up your words to him. You're worthy, God. Hallelujah. Give glory to God, saints. Give glory to God. Give glory to God, saints. Give glory to God. Give glory to God, saints. Give glory to God. Give glory to God, saints. Give glory to God. I'm going to sing it again. Give glory to God, saints. Give glory to God, yes, Lord. Give glory to God, saints. Give glory to God. Oh, give glory to God, saints. Give glory to God. Oh, give glory to God, saints. Oh, yeah. Give glory to God. I'm going to see if you're listening to me this morning. Oh, lift up your hands, saints. Woo. Give glory to God. You ought to lift up your hands, saints, because he's worthy. Give glory to God. Come on, this is the least we can do. Lift up your hands, saints. Glory to God, yeah, give glory to God, saints, uh -huh. give glory to God, oh, sing hallelujah, saints, give glory to God, oh, sing hallelujah. Saints, oh, give glory to God. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sing hallelujah, saints. Oh, give glory to God. Give glory to God, saints. Oh, give glory to God. Oh, He's worthy of the praise, saints. How many believe that? Come on. Give glory to God. Yes, Lord. He's worthy of the praise, saints. You ought to give glory to God. 
so far. Let me hear you say amen. All oh, we can do better than that. Come on, put your hands together and give God some praise in this place today. He is awesome. He is worthy. And he deserves it. He deserves every bit of it. Thank you, Jesus. Beloved, before I jump into the word of God, allow me just a moment to offer uh, my deepest and sincerest condolences to the Williams family. I don't know if Taryn is here at the moment, but if she is, Taryn, I want you to know on behalf of your pastoral staff, uh, myself, Pastor Jemison, and Pastor Hall, and the entire North Church, we love you, we are here for you, and we are indeed praying. Amen, somebody. Amen and amen. We also have a a birthday, if I'm not mistaken, a few days ago, a young person, Anisha Carmichael. Don't know if she's here today, but she had a birthday. And so if you are here, we just want to wish you a happy birthday as well. Beloved, I'm excited to get into the Word. Are you excited? Oh, come on and talk back to me. I say, are you excited? We have been blessed, all, blessed already by Brother AJ. Thank you so much. And, and by our illustrious band, as usual, thank you so much. And at this time, beloved, I want to take your attention to uh, Matthew, the book of Matthew. What book did I say? Love it when you talk back to me. What book did I say? Matthew chapter 9. And we're going to look at briefly today, verses 35 through 38. Again, Matthew chapter 9. Verses 35 through 38. When you get there, say, I got it, preacher. Oh, you all are fast. When you get there, say, I got it, preacher. 
And once you're there, those of you who are willing and able, would you be so kind to just stand to your feet all over this beautiful sanctuary? For those of you who are new, we do this for two reasons. How many reasons? Come on, talk to me, AJ. How many reasons? We do it for two reasons. One, to shake off that sleepitis. Mm. And then secondly, we do it to honor the sacred and majestic word of God. Matthew chapter 9, verses 35 through 38, reading from the English Standard Version, and it reads this way. And Jesus, who did I say? Mm, don't you love that name? And Jesus, who did I say? Don't you just love that name? And Jesus went throughout all the cities and villages, teaching in their synagogues or their churches, and proclaiming the gospel of the kingdom, and healing every disease and every affliction. Verse 36, when he saw the crowds, he saw them. He had compassion for them. He had what, everybody? Compassion for them. Because they were harassed and helpless like sheep without a shepherd. Lord, have mercy. Then he said to his disciples, don't you miss this now. Then he said to his disciples, I say, don't you miss this now. He said to his disciples, the harvest is plentiful. Thought I had a church this, this afternoon. The harvest is is plentiful but the laborers but the laborers are few therefore pray earnestly to the Lord of the harvest to send out laborers into his harvest beloved just for a little while I want to preach and teach from the subject simply entitled uh, it's different this time part Two. Somebody say part two. And if I could just give this a subtitle, a subtitle, I'll simply tag it labor shortage. Labor shortage. Do me a favor and turn to your neighbor and say neighbor. Oh, come on now. Say neighbor. You ain't talking. Say neighbor. Say oh neighbor. There is a labor shortage. Father in heaven. It is your time, and we're asking that you do what you do best, and that is get the glory you so deserve. Holy Spirit, we're asking that you do what you do best, and that is allow this word, this sacred word, this holy word to find a lodging place in the hearts of your people. And then last but certainly not least, we say thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus, for allowing them to put holes in your hands and holes in your feet that you may feel the holes in our hearts. This we pray in the blessed name of Jesus. I, all God's people, both online and in the house, said amen, amen, and amen. Just before you sit down, one more time, just turn to your neighbor and say, neighbor, come on like you mean it, neighbor. I don't know what you've heard, but it's only north from here. Yes, you may be seated in the presence of the Lord. It's different this time. Labor, 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 shortage. Labor, shortage. For as long as I can remember, North Church, and to those of you who are viewing online, I've always been a worker. Can't speak for you. I'm still getting to know everybody, but I can speak for myself. Come on, talk back to me. Amen, somebody. For as long as I can remember, I've always been, Pastor Hall, a, a worker. You didn't have to beg me to work. I'm preaching already. You didn't have to persuade me to work. I was just that kid who was always willing to work. Even before I was of legal age to work, <laughs> I still, Joya, found work. I would cut grass in the summer. I would, I would, I would shovel snow in the winter. 
Am I talking to anybody? I would, I would, I would, I would rake leaves in the fall. Am I talking to anybody? I was that kid who would stand outside the grocery store and offer to put people's groceries in their cars for a small, thoughtful donation. I was, I, was, I was not one of those kids who always had their hand out for something, but I was the kid willing, don't miss it, to work for it. Somebody shout work. In the city of St. Louis, you had to be 16 years old to work officially. Legally, 15 years old with a permit. Because I was so eager to work and refused to wait until I turned 15, at the tender age of 14, I lied on my application and indicated I was older than I really was. I used a razor, y'all, to change the year I was born on my birth certificate. Somebody shout shame on you, pastor. Y'all so judgmental. That was the past. That was the past. That was the past. (laughs) I remember like it was yesterday. Mm -hmm. I was was, was, was eager to work. Cutting grass, didn't cut it anymore. Shoveling snow, didn't quite cut it anymore. And I wanted more. Somebody say more. And 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 so I remember applying for a job at the local Jack in the Box. Now, 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 I haven't seen one of those since I've been here. I don't know if that's just a Midwest thing or not, but, but, but it's called Jack in the Box. In fact, we call it Jack in the Crack. 14 years old. No mustache, no beard. Looking like a baby. And I knew doggone well. I know I like saying doggone, Kalia. Doggone well. If the person interviewing me knew I was not of age. But he could not deny the information provided. I took that birth certificate, Elder Joseph, and I took that razor, and I shaved off the four or the five in 1985 and made it a four. Then, 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 then I took that birth certificate and made a copy of it, y'all, and told the person, Kathea, interviewing me that, that, that I lost my original copy. But I have this one. Somebody say, shame on you, pastor. Y'all so judgmental. I said that was the past. That was the past. The person hired me, y'all, and at the tender age of 14, because I wanted to work. Somebody say work. I had the job. That's how bad I wanted to work. And as, I, and as I worked in junior high, as I worked all through high school, I noticed that a whole lot of my peers were working. Every once in a while, a few friends of mine would come along and ask if my job was hiring. They would ask if I could hook them up or put them on. And after I would tell them that we are always hiring, after I would tell them that workers are always needed, I'm going somewhere, after I would put in a good word for them and even get them in in, an interview, when it was time for them to show up to work, they were nowhere, nowhere to be found. And it was right then and there, North Church. It was right then and there, those of you who were tuning in online. It was right then and there that I realized at that tender age that, 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 that the reason people weren't working was not because they didn't have an opportunity, but the reason people weren't working was because they didn't want to. Calm down, preacher. Calm down, preacher. There was always work to do. It just wasn't always workers available to do it. There was always work to do. Just wasn't always workers available to do it. There is no doubt that the pandemic has had a devastating impact on the economy in the working class. Come on, talk back to me. Say amen, somebody. No doubt. According to the CBPP, which is the Center of Budget and Policy Priorities, The unemployment rate jumped in April 2020 to a level not seen since the 1930s. Talking about work. Mm -hmm. And it stood at a 4.9% 
at 4.9% in October 21. Compared with 3.5% in February 2020, that official unemployment rate, moreover, understated job losses. Stick with me. Since the pandemic, many businesses have suffered because they were forced to lay people off, and now they are struggling to get people back. The CBPP institution and many like it will tell you that the reason why many aren't returning back to work is because they are dissatisfied with wages. They want more. But I would argue that the reason why many aren't returning back to work is because they have become comfortable and complacent. I knew it would get quiet right around this poor Stephen. Mm -hmm. Stimulus checks were a blessing and helped many people who were in need at the time. I know I benefited from it. But don't you think for one moment it didn't make people comfortable and complacent. Mm -hmm. The child tax credits and emergency food stamps were a blessing and helped many people who were in need at the time. But don't you think for one moment it didn't contribute to people becoming comfortable and complacent. Rent and mortgage assistance were a blessing and helped many people who were in need at the time. But don't you think for one moment it didn't make people comfortable and got a church today complacent. I know this doesn't apply to everyone, but if you give most people something without them having to work for it, usually, typically, they become comfortable and complacent. Why work when the government is willing to take care of me? It's quiet in here today. Why work when my family is willing to take care of me? It's quiet in here. Why work when I can just sit back and collect? Oh, you know, the power is quiet in here. But I come to tell somebody today that work is not just about you collecting something, but work is about you contributing to something. Am I talking to anybody? Work, 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 work. Somebody shout work. Work, 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 work. Work is not just about you benefiting from something, but work is about you benefiting others. Work is an opportunity for you to meet a need. Work is an opportunity to help solve a problem. Work is not just about survival and sustainability, but work is also about your contribution to society. How can I work to make this world a better place? Work. Work. There was a time, there was a time, so Stephen, mm -hmm, when, 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 when folk actually enjoyed working. Ooh, help me, Holy Ghost. There was a time when people took pride in working. Mm -hmm. there, was, there was a time when folk looked forward to working. But oh, how times have changed. Many of us look forward to retirement because we are sick and tired of working. I know I'm talking right. But talk to somebody who's retired already. And many of them will tell you it's not what you think. I remember some years ago, don't you judge me. You already judged me twice today, don't you judge me. I remember some, 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 some years ago back in Huntsville, Alabama, I would go into my local Walmart. I love Walmart. You can get everything from Walmart. One-stop shop. Am I talking to anybody? Go into Walmart, and there was this older gentleman. Had to be in his late 70s, early 80s. And every time I would walk into that Walmart, Elder Brown, I would judge him. Didn't know no better, so don't judge me. I'm telling you what I did. And I would judge him. I would say to myself, what didn't he do right? Can I just be transparent? That landed him in the position he's in today. Can I just be real? I'm telling you what I thought. I would judge him. What, 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 what decisions did he make or did not make that caused him 
to be a greeter at Walmart today. I would judge this man. Must didn't manage his funds right. Didn't invest properly. Didn't start working early enough. Judgment. And one day I just asked him. I said, man, do you like what you do? And he said to me, y'all, he said, he said, he said, I see how you've been looking at me, young man. See, sometimes you ain't got to say nothing. Your, lang your body language says it all. Here's a lesson for some of you right now. You're wondering why certain people are, 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 are taken back when they see you. You're wondering why certain people don't talk to you. You're wondering why certain folk don't want to be around you. You ain't said a word, but you don't have to say a word. They can read your body language. For some of us, your body language screams, stay away from me. So watch this now, watch this now. He said, he said, he said, he said, I, 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 I see <laughs> how you been looking at me. <laughs> he said, he said, he said, young man, I love this job. But don't get it twisted, I don't have to do this job. He said, young man, I've been retired not one time, but two times. He said, young man, I get two pensions, not one. He said, young man, I'm here because after the first time I retired, I'm talking about work somebody, my bones started locking up on me. After the first time I got retired, I started getting bored at home all about my lonesome. He said, after my second retirement, I said to myself that, that, that although I was looking forward to retirement, I need work. He said, I'm not here because I have to be. I'm here because I want to be. Is there anybody in the house today not here because somebody made you come? You're not here because mama drugged you. You're not here because your husband forced you. But you're here because you want to be. Mm -hmm. what, what, what you must remember, beloved, Whew. is that work is a blessing from God. I know we talk bad about it. We don't really like it. We figure out ways to get around it. But work, somebody say work, is a blessing from God. Many of you believe that work is a curse. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I know it, I know it, I know it. Now, depending on what kind of job you do, what kind of work you do, I can understand how you feel like that. <laughs> but don't you forget, friends of mine, that work was pre-sin, not post. <laughs> Although the nature of work and the effects of work may have been impacted by sin, before sin ever reared its ugly head, there was something called work. Somebody shout work. You don't believe me? You don't believe me? Ah, I need you to see it. Genesis chapter 2, verse 15. Ah, Genesis chapter 2. Come on, come on, go there with me. I want you to see it for yourself. Don't you take the preacher's word for it. Genesis chapter 2, verse 15. Not hard to find. Very first book in the Bible. Genesis chapter what? In verse what? 15. Watch this now. Watch this now. The Bible says, the Bible says, whoo, help me, Holy Ghost. Ah, the Lord God took the man and put him in the garden of Eden to sleep. <laughs> the Lord God took the man and put him in the garden of Eden to slouch. Can't get no help in here today. I, I'm, I'm, I'm just trying to give him the Bible, Stephen. Now, the, the, the Lord God took the man, put him in the garden of Eden to observe. Whole lot of onlookers today and a whole lot of spectators in there to observe. No, 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 no. The Bible says, your Bible says, the Lord God took the man, put him in the Garden of Eden to work. Somebody shall work. To work it. And to love the word of God. Keep it, keep it, keep it. Work has always been here. And work has always been necessary. Work has always been available. But the workers, 
but the workers, but the workers have not always been willing. <laughs> not only are folk opting out of work for man. Try my best, try my best. Not only are folk opting out of work for man, but we're living in a time where folk are opting out of work for God. Lord have mercy. There's always something else you got to do. <laughs> Your schedule is always packed and full. <laughs> you, got, you, got, you, got, you got too much to take this one on. But I'm so glad that when we come to God, God doesn't respond to us. I'm too busy right now, Jamon. I, 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 I got too much on my plate right now, Pastor Hall. I, I, my calendar is too full right now. I, check back with me next year. Check back with me when you look for officers then. Check back for me when you're looking for it. My God says when you call on me. I will answer, I'm so glad God is not like man. Not only are folk opting out of work for man, but folk are opting out of work for God. There was a labor shortage then, and there's a labor shortage now. There was a labor shortage then, and there's a labor shortage now. I'm in the Bible now. After Jesus heals the woman with the issue of blood, ah, we dealt with that last year, after I, or, or, or last week, after Jesus heals the woman with the issue of blood, he goes on to heal Jairus' daughter, two blind men, a demon-possessed man who was mute, and many others who were afflicted. I'm giving you Bible now. Now, keep in mind, keep in mind that Jesus is not just healing and reaching folk within a small radius. Fernand, watch this, watch this now. He is not just healing and reaching folk in an isolated area. No, sir, no, ma'am. But your Bible says that he went throughout all the cities and all the villages teaching in their synagogues, teaching in their churches, and proclaiming the gospel of the kingdom. So Jesus is making his rounds. Uh-huh, uh-huh, uh-huh. I see you over there, and I see you over here. I see you over there, and I see you over here. But notice, it's only one of Jesus. It's only one Jesus. But he's making his rounds. I see you over there. I see you over here. It's one Jesus. But there's a whole lot of work. There's one Jesus. But there's a whole lot of work, Brenda. He's making his rounds, Pam. He's moving from city to city. From village call to village. From synagogue to synagogue. From church to church. Don't miss this now. Jesus is mingling with the people. He sees the crowds. He sees the masses. And it is at this point, at this juncture, ah, help me, Holy Ghost, woo, that, 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 that he begins to do the math and realizes his math ain't mathing. In other words, something is not adding up. His math ain't madding, y'all. For, 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 I see a whole lot of people who needs service, but I don't see a whole lot of people who are serving. His math not mathing, Stephen. He sees the crowd. He sees the masses. He's mingling. He's going around. He sees the need, and he says, the math ain't right. I see a whole lot of people who are in need of service, but I don't see a whole lot of folk who are served thee. The Bible says, Jesus then looks at the disciples. Shoo. Pastor, so dramatic. Can you just see him right there after doing all that? And shoo. Has anybody ever been talking around you and what they were talking about referred to you? And you were just hoping that they didn't look at you 
can you see Jesus in this context? Disciples right here. And he says, the math ain't mathy. Some ain't adding up. They right here now. I see a whole lot of folks serving, but I don't see a whole lot of folk in service. It ain't just there, but everybody who's around. The Bible says Jesus then looks at his disciples and says, the harvest is plentiful, but the laborers, somebody say laborers, or few. Somebody shout labor shortage. Labor shortage, labor shortage, labor shortage. <laughs> Ooh, help me, Jesus. Help me, Jesus. Uh, beloved, I believe it's different this time. Mm -hmm. We have gone far too long opting out of work. We have gone far too long sleeping when we ought to be working. Stick with me. We have gone far too long with our arms folded and our mouths closed. But I come to tell you today that this year can't be like any other year. It's got to be different this time. You may be used to watching others serve, but you are declaring by faith it's different this time. You may be accustomed to warming up the pews so hot it's about to catch fire. But you are declaring by faith it's different this time. You may have gotten comfortable staying quiet and keeping to yourself, but you are declaring by faith it's different this time. You are declaring that you are no longer standing in the unemployment line waiting to be served. But this year, you are stepping out your comfort zone. This year, you are stepping outside of your comfort zone. This year, you are stepping outside of your comfort space, willing and ready to work. Somebody shout work. To work for God. And can I tell you, you don't need a title to do it. Can I tell you, you don't need a position to do it. Can I tell you, you don't need a degree to do it. Can I tell you, you don't need status to do it? Can I tell you, you don't need money to do it? You don't need connection to do it? You don't need experience to do it? All you need is a willing spirit. Somebody shout glory. I'm almost done. Stick with me, stick with me. Now, 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 now those of you who have made up in your mind that it's going to be different this time, those of you who have decided to work for the Lord, I wouldn't be a good pastor if I didn't give you a heads up and fill you in regarding the positions that are available. Now help me, Holy Ghost. Those of you who have made your mind up, those of you who have decided to work for the Lord, I wouldn't be a good pastor, y'all, if I didn't give you a heads up, if I didn't fill you in regarding the positions that are available. Don't miss this now. What I'm about to share with you is not meant to discourage you, but to give you unadulterated truth so you know what to look forward to and what God is looking for. Are you ready for it? Are you ready for it? What you need to know, if you are interested in working for the Lord, is that there are no part-time positions available. I get it in a minute. I get it in a minute. I get it in a minute. What you need to know, if you are interested in working for the Lord, is that there are no part-time, somebody shout part-time, positions available. Ah, it's going to get quiet here. <laughs> this is, help me Jesus. This is important because many have signed up for part-time work as though they serve a part-time God. And the moment you don't get what you're looking for, the moment things don't work in your favor the way you intend for them to, the moment you don't experience the fulfillment of God's promises, you complain, you give up. 
and you even consider leaving the church altogether, failing to realize that part-time workers never get full-time benefits. Who am I talking to today? Failing to realize part-time workers never get full-time benefits. We want a whole lot from God. We don't want to give a whole lot to God. Part-time workers expect much while only giving the bare minimum. I'm just telling you, I, I'm just telling why part-time positions aren't available. Don't get mad, don't get mad when you're working for God. Part-time workers can tell you about the many things God has done for them, but they can't tell you a whole bunch, a whole, a whole lot, or much about what they've done for God. I'm talking about part-time workers. It doesn't apply to you all, of course. A part-time worker is a direct reflection of a part-time Christian. Quiet today. <laughs> A part-time worker is a direct reflection of a part-time Christian. Part-time Christians pick and choose. Pick and choose. They pick and choose when they will serve and how they will serve. Mm -hmm. Part-time Christians will work on Sabbath and Sunday and take the rest of the week off. Part-time Christians will work on Sabbath and Sunday and take the rest of the week off. Not only do part-time Christians work for the Lord when they want to, but part-time Christians act like the Lord when they want to. It's quiet, it's quiet, it's quiet, it's quiet. A part-time Christian will hug you in church and stab you in the parking lot. A part-time Christian will pray for you on Monday and cuss you out on Tuesday. A part-time Christian will compliment you in person and then talk about you like a dog behind closed doors. A part-time Christian will sip holy wine during communion and then sip the other wine at the reunion. Am I talking to anybody? Y'all not talking back to me? I don't know who I'm talking to today, but I stopped by to tell somebody that God is looking for full-time, dedicated, committed workers. Somebody shout glory in the house today. And the good thing about God, beloved, is that if you've signed up for part-time for part work, it's not too late to request a full-time position. It doesn't matter how long you've been part-time because the harvest is plentiful. Because the harvest is plentiful, beloved, there is full-time work available. In order to be an effective full-time worker, y'all, for the Lord in this new year, there is one thing you must have, beloved, and that's compassion. Somebody shout compassion. What caused Jesus to move like he moved? Compassion. What caused Jesus to sacrifice like he did? Compassion. What caused Jesus to heal like he did? Compassion. What caused Jesus to teach, serve, encourage, empower? Equipped like he did. Compassion. Compassion. Jesus' desire to have more laborers was a result of his compassion. Before he even mentions the harvest being plentiful and the laborers being few, notice what he says just before that. Verse 36 of our key passage says, when Jesus saw the crowds, I'm giving you Bible, y'all. The Bible says he had what? The Bible says he had compassion for them because they were harassed and helpless like sheep without a shepherd. Beloved, there are people all around us 
there are people all around us. There are people all around us who are helpless and who are like sheep without a shepherd. People in our families. And you're thinking about them right now. You know who they are. People in our neighborhoods. You can see them right now. You know who they are. You say good morning every day. And they don't even know you believe in God. People in our classrooms. You see them right now. Because you sit next to them every day. And even in your classroom, they don't know that you believe in God. People on our jobs. People we pass by every day. And the only thing that will raise your antenna, the only thing that will draw you to them is the compassion that you have in your heart for them. Nothing else will do. You have to see them. Listen to me now. You have to see them as God sees them. Far too long, you've been looking through your lens, but not God's lens. Your lens ain't 22. Your vision not 2020. Your lens is corrupt. Your lenses need to be upgraded. Your lenses need an adjustment. We have to see them as God sees them. I don't care if they smoke. I don't care if they drink. I don't care if they're gay. I don't care if they're mentally unstable. They need the Lord just like you do. And Lord, have mercy if you've gotten to the point where you feel as though you don't need him anymore. You've arrived. Come on now, give me some. You're, you're good. God is asking you today, beloved, the same question he asked Isaiah. Whom shall I send? And who will go for us? Whom? Shall I sin? Thought I have a few more folk who will shout glory right there. Whom shall I sin? And who will go for us? And my prayer, beloved, is that we step up this time because it's different this time, isn't it? Isn't it? It's different this time, isn't it? It's different this time. My prayer is that we respond like Isaiah saying, here I am, Lord. Send me. Here I am, Lord. Send me. Is there anybody with that response today? Here I am, Lord. Broken, beaten down, bruised, scorned, but here I am, Lord. Send me me if I got to be a doorkeeper send me Lord if I got to be an encourager send me Lord if I got to be a prayer warrior send me Lord if I got to stand outside the church every week saying welcome to the North Church. Send me Lord. If I got to be creative and make my own my own cards encouraging people on the inside and passing them out. See every, every, every all the work doesn't require a title or a position and pass them out. If I got to go to the bus stop, pass them out or pass out a track. If I got to go on Facebook, you're there anyway. And share your testimony or your praise report. If I got to start my own Bible study. If I got to start my own prayer meeting. 
Now, hopefully, you'll still lead them here. It's quiet out there. But it doesn't have to start here. In order for it to end here, there was a work to be done. But the question is, will your response be like Isaiah? Because God is calling, whom shall I send? And he wants to know who will go for us. And will you respond? Here I am, Lord. So you can't respond like that if you haven't surrendered. Here I am, Lord. You can't surrender. Uh, you, can't, you can't respond like that if you, if you haven't committed. Here I am, Lord. You can't respond like that if you haven't made your mind up. Here I am, Lord. Send me. I can't speak for my son, but you can send me. I can't speak for my spouse, but Lord, you can send me. I can't speak for my church, but Lord, you can send me. Lord, I'm available. I'm available. Is there anybody available? Come on, stand on your feet if you're saying, Lord, I'm available. Use me, Lord. Send me, Lord. I'm available. Here I am, Lord. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Yes, Lord. We're available. Listen, 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 listen. Listen to what listen to what Ellen White says in the book entitled Christian Leadership. She says, it would be well, somebody shout well. It would be well if those occupying positions of trust in our institutions would remember they think that they are to be representatives of Jesus. She says, true godliness, holiness, love, and here it is, compassion for tempted souls must be revealed in their lives. She says, Christ gave himself to the world that he might save those who would believe in him. Shall not we, partakers of this great salvation, value the souls for whom he gave his life? She says, let us labor. Let us labor with the perseverance and energy proportionate to the value Christ places upon his blood-bought heritage. She concludes by saying, human souls have cost too much to be trifled with or treated with harshness or indifference. Beloved, end quote, beloved, there is work to do. Beloved, there is work available. Beloved, workers are needed. Let's work unto the Lord with compassion in our hearts. For this is the will of God in Christ Jesus. It doesn't matter what you've done last year. Doesn't matter what you've done the year before that. In the year before that, in the year before that, in the year before that, for this is a new year. And I believe, I believe it's different this time. Come on, put your hands together. Give God some praise in this place today. Thank you, Jesus. At this time, beloved, as you remain standing, I want to invite all of my elders to join me. To join me right now on the platform. All of my elders, would you just come and join me at this time? As we play softly. And then while the elders are coming, 
I want to ask or invite all of our new departmental leaders, all of our leaders who were just elected for 2023 and 2024, if you will be so kind, if you will be so kind to join me on the platform at this time. Come, 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 come. Come, come, come. Come, come, come. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Don't be serving awesome God, y'all. Now watch this now. Because they were elected, does it mean the work is only for them to do? Just because they were elected doesn't mean the work is only for them to do. Because the church may have elected them, but God has elected all of you. And the same work that God expects from them is the same work that God expects from you but beloved at this time we just want to we want to pray over our new leaders we want to pray for their strength in the Lord and I need your help if you'll be so kind just stretch forth your hand just stretch forth your hand all eyes are closed and heads are bowed as the music is played softly father in heaven we thank you for these group of leaders whom you have chosen, whom you have selected. I pray, oh God, that you will fill each one right now with your Holy Spirit, that you will cover each one right now with your precious blood, that you will grant each one knowledge, understanding, insight. Give each one wisdom, oh God, Help them with discernment, oh God. Help them to not lean on their own understanding, God. But help them to always rely and depend upon you. Father, I pray that you will order their steps, that you will go before them. Let there not be any planning without you in the midst. Let there not be any discussions without you in the midst. Let there not be any collaboration without you in the midst. Lord, I pray for success. I pray for confidence. I pray for patience. I pray for perseverance. I pray, oh God, that when they feel like giving up, instead of giving up, they will give it to you, Jesus. They will lay it at your feet, Jesus. They will lay it at the altar, Jesus, expecting you to handle it. Lord, I don't just pray for these leaders, but I pray for every person under the sound of my voice. Lord, you have called them to, and you have already blessed them as well. Help them to be supportive. Help them to be creative and help them to be prayer warriors. Lord, we believe that it's only north from here, but we cannot go north, oh God, if we're not blessed with your presence. And so God, rest, rule, and abide right now so that these new leaders can be effective and all of our leaders and our workers in church at large can be effective as well. Lord, I believe it's different this time. Northbound 3.0, oh God, we're taking it up just another notch once again. 
We're not going back to 2020, 2021, 2022. It's a new year and a new season. And this time is different because this time we are doing it your way. Bless us, keep us is our prayer. In the blessed name of Jesus, all God's people said amen, amen, and amen. Let's put our hands together and give God some praise once more in this place. You may be seated for a moment of silence. 